let me give you a quick mnemonic to remember something very important. So project management could be done in groups of processes. And these groups of processes have a method, again, to the madness. And the mnemonic is, I prefer eating mangoes chilled. And that covers initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. And then we also have the process groups in this format, or I should say the processes in this format of knowledge areas. So you can slice the processes of project management by process group, or you can slice them by knowledge area. So if you slice them by knowledge area, you have this, and I'll give you a mnemonic for this. And the mnemonic is, I saw six Cubans quietly rolling cigars, really puffing smoke. So that's a mnemonic. I saw six Cubans quietly rolling cigars, really puffing smoke. And what does all this mean? Knowledge areas are areas of knowledge within project management. It's a no-brainer that we can slice and dice things in different ways. And one of the ways we can slice project management is by knowledge area. So the knowledge areas, I'll just go over them really quickly. We've got integration, the overall coordination of everything, scope. I describe scope, the work that needs to be done to get the requirements into the hands of the customer through the deliverable. Schedule management, developing a timeline and kind of make, making sure the beat of the project is smack dab on the timeline. Cost management, estimating the costs and budgeting and so on. Quality management, identifying quality targets and meeting them. Resource management, managing human equipment, materials, supplies, facilities. Communications management, managing all manner of communications. Risk management, planning and managing uncertainties that impact the project. Procurement management, managing contracts and procurements. And lastly, stakeholder management, managing your stakeholders. So, tell me. Does this all make sense? If it doesn't, I would like to explain some more what this is all about. But how long can you stick around for? That's the question. Because if we get into it, it could take another hour or two or three or four or day or two. So anyway, here's the mnemonic. I saw six Cubans quietly rolling cigars, really puffing smoke. And if you really boil it all down and put all the pieces of the puzzle together, you get this scary picture on page 25 in the PEMBOK guide. And this is where we are beginning to get into CAPM and PMP territory. So if you take a look at the screen, it just shows you that if you slice project management by process group and you slice it by knowledge area, you get intersections. And those intersections are processes. And there are 49 processes of project management. And these 49 processes are used to do different things. And what I would like to do really quick is just take you through a few of these, give you an idea of what exactly the project manager is aspiring to do in these, okay? I'll also call your attention to the fact that every one of those 49 processes has an input, something that goes into the process, a tool and technique to work the process, and an output something that comes out on the other end. So at the end of the day, you've got something that looks like this. Someone said, Phil, that's, that's like human DNA, or DNA of, some, of something, some, some creature, some animal, like it's the DNA of your project. Your project is a living thing. So that's the DNA for your project. Why do we need project management? Well, here's a reminder. The Sydney Opera House, you ever read about that? 10 years behind schedule, 14 times over budget, absolutely revolting as a project. But someone says, hey, but it's, it's a nice structure. Do you know the history of it? Go read it. As a result of bad interpersonal skills, the poor person who designed the thing ends up not being able to work with them and it just goes to the dogs. It goes to the dogs, just miserable. There are many projects like that. If you read up another project, the, my friends at the FBI, I just, you know, I don't mean any harm. I just have to let them know that once upon a time, you know what you did with our taxpayer money? You try to do the VCF project. 
the virtual case file project, we know what happened. And when I told my friends at the FBI, we kind of joked about that, but honestly, go check out the virtual case file project because it does require some studying to really see why Agile is important. At the end of the day, anyway, we ended up using a totally different method, you know, to get that done. Totally different method. Go read up the story about the virtual case file project, you know. And I, I just joked with the, the folks, you know, the folks in the PMP training. Why did that fail? And no one truly knew that Agile was now the flavor that had to be used because things were so rapidly changing. It took an expert eye to see fully planned driven isn't going to cut it. So when you look at taxpayer money, we pay a lot of monies for projects that need to be better managed. So, I mean, after hundreds of millions of dollars, someone suddenly stands up, Eureka, it's agile. Too late, buddy. You wasted hundreds of millions of dollars. But anyway, they ended up getting it done. That's the good news. I think they, they ended up getting it done like a decade later or something outrageous like that. Go read it up. Virtual case file project. Anyway, cut long story short, project management is important and this is why it's important. You know, it's for reasons like this. Reasons such as trying to stay on budget, trying to make sure we don't go off and also customer satisfaction. This is a little exercise from, from my training that I do. I, I usually tell people to come up with one to three reasons why projects they know have failed. So do you know of any failed projects and why did they fail? Can you chat in to me if you are engaged or am I background music or background noise. Maybe you're not really paying attention to what your buddy Phil is saying or you're like, oh, it's probably a recording. No, it's not. I'm live. So if you want to chat in, I'll be keen to know if you have truly seen this kind of thing happen on projects. I find it interesting to know if my students have experienced failure, you know, on, on projects. And if they have, I want to know what it was so I can use that to train other people.